Welcome to Brunswick Beat. Brunswick County's only television news show brought to you by the Brunswick Beacon. I'm Rachel Johnson. And I'm Stacey Manning. 28-year-old Matthew Baber was convicted Monday of the first-degree murder of 28-year-old James Murdoch of Calabash. After deliberating for less than an hour, jurors convicted Baber of Sunset Beach of the first-degree murder from a May 8, 2008 drive-by shooting. Murdoch was gunned down while sitting in the front seat of his friend's minivan. Baber fired 22 rounds from an AK-47, striking Murdoch, who bled to death in front of his Pine Claire Drive home in Calabash. Baber's attorney said he planned to appeal the conviction. Pick up this week's Beacon for an in-depth look at the trial. Shalott resident Jimmy Todd had just turned the television off in his living room and was preparing for bed Wednesday, February 15th, when he flipped the switch to his bedroom light and it didn't turn on. Then he heard a loud boom. He had no idea the roof of his house at 4393 Ritz Circle was on fire until he ran outside. Todd, a veteran and former police officer, lost everything, including his photos from Iraq, his Army uniforms, and his Harley Davidson. He credits the Shalot Fire Department for arriving quickly for saving two nearby houses. He warns others that a smoke detector in the attic could save your home and your life. Brunswick Community College is standing united with other North Carolina Community College in asking the state restore Community College funding. BCC is one of 58 North Carolina community colleges speaking out against the state's management flexibility plan. In fiscal year 2011-2012, community colleges in North Carolina were required to return more than $79 million to the state from their earned budgets. For BCC, this meant more than $680,000 and a total of near $1.3 million during the last three years. BCC officials say these budget cuts are making it difficult for the college to provide services to students and the community. A log truck was involved in a wreck on U.S. 17 North at the intersection of Supply Street Southeast shortly after 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday, February 22nd. Logs from the log truck spilled onto the roadway, closing the stretch of U.S. 17 from North Carolina 211 to Benton Road for about five hours. In their first meeting since former Chairman Charles Warren was removed, members of the Brunswick County Board of Social Services got back to business Monday. Last week, Brunswick County Commissioners voted four votes to one to remove Warren from the DSS Board for, among other things, removing fellow board member Pat Sykes and a Beacon reporter from a December 2011 DSS Board meeting. Commissioners appointed Elsie Peterson, whose term expired last year, as Warren's replacement. At the start of Monday's DSS meeting, board members unanimously appointed former Vice Chairman Tina Jackson as the new board chairman. All right, adopt the agenda. Yes, thank you. I'd like to add to the agenda um, the minutes of December 13th meeting that we used the audio recording of that meeting. Okay. And I'll provide everybody a, a, a disc with the um, minutes on it, and then we can vote on it at the next meeting. Is this your Candidate filing for the 2012 election ended at noon Wednesday. The primary election will be Tuesday, May 8th, and the general election will be Tuesday, November 6th. Local contests have crowded fields. District 5 Commissioner Bill Sue is not seeking re-election. Two Republicans and one Democrat have filed to succeed him. Former Brunswick County Health Director Don Yalsey, former GOP 7th Congressional District Chairman Frank Williams, and Democrat Michael Ballard have filed for the District 5 seat. District 3 Republican County Commissioner Charles Warren, who filed for re-election Tuesday, is challenged by three fellow Republicans looking to oust him. Former South Port Alderman Wontana Frank, Dosher Hospital Trustee Joe Agavino, and DSS board member Pat Sykes are all challenging him for the GOP primary. Republican incumbent Scott Phillips, who represents District 4, has filed for re-election. Agents with the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office Drug Enforcement Unit recently arrested several people on drug charges. 38-year-old Sherry Nadonley of Bolivia was charged with trafficking opium or heroin and possession of marijuana. She was taken to the Brunswick County Detention Center, where she was placed under a $750,000 secured bond. Brian Teamsa, 19, also of Bolivia, was charged with trafficking opium or heroin in possession of marijuana. He was also given a $750,000 secured bond. 
A Leland man has been arrested for multiple cocaine charges. Brunswick County Sheriff's Office Drug Enforcement Agents recently arrested Saul Ruiz, 27, of Leland and charged him with trafficking cocaine, possession with intent to manufacture, sell, and deliver cocaine, manufacturing cocaine, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Ruiz was taken to the Brunswick County Detention Center where he was placed under a $200,000 secured bond. Find all of these stories and much more in this week's Beacon, available on newsstands now. Hi, I'm Stacy Manning, Managing Editor of the Brunswick Beacon. Do you have a community event you'd like to tell our community about? You can email it to me at editor at brunswickbeacon.com or you can log on to our website at www.brunswickbeacon.com. Look for the Submit News icon near the top right-hand corner of the page. Deadlines are noon each Friday. Welcome to the Beacon Sports Report. In local wrestling action, South Brunswick senior John Wiley rallied from a 6-3 deficit in the third period to beat Robinson Jr. Keenan Robertson by fall to win on Saturday at the Greensboro Coliseum Complex. Wiley claimed the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Class 3A State Wrestling Championship at 152 pounds. The victory also avenged a disappointing finish in the state tournament last year where Wiley finished sixth. Wiley finished this, this season 51-2, and two, but for most of the match, the lead was by Robertson, who had just two losses this year. South's last state champion was in 2004. Jeremy Roundtree was a runner-up in 2009, and Matt Craven was third last year. West Brunswick had one wrestler at the state meet, senior Robbie, Ronnie Dellinger, and he finished fifth at 106 pounds. Bedenfield's strong rebounding was too much for North Brunswick to overcome in a 69-67 loss on February 24th in a North Carolina High School Athletic Association Class 2A sectional basketball final. The Scorpions finished the season 16-9. North Brunswick High School senior Megan Barrett signed a letter of intent February 23rd to attend Kishwaukee College in Malta, Illinois and play softball. In the latest national poll for this season, the Cougars are ranked number 11 in Division II. Barrett said it was through ncsasports.org, a recruiting website, that the school showed interest. Last season, North Brunswick was 8-12. Barrett, a pitcher, was 3-6 with a 4.22 earned run average. She walked 22, hit 7, and struck out 59 in 56.1 innings. She gave up 59 hits and 34 earned runs. You can read all of these stories and see more great photos in this week's sports section of The Beacon. Hi, I'm Rachel Johnson, staff writer with the Brunswick Beacon. Do you know of an upcoming event or a special person that you would like to see featured on the Brunswick Beat from Holden Beach, Ocean Isle, or Shalot? If so, then give me a call at 754-6890. You can also reach me via email at rjohnson at thebrunswickbeacon.com. You can also submit news by logging onto our website at www.brunswickbeacon.com. Click the Submit News icon on the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Anything that can get my toes in the sand, I want to be there to cover. Did you get engaged recently or married? Have you celebrated a milestone anniversary or did you have a baby? How about letting us share the news with our readers? You can email your social news to me at editor at brunswickbeacon.com or you can log on to our website at www.brunswickbeacon.com. Look for the submit news icon near the top right hand corner of the page. Deadlines are noon each Friday. Hi, I'm at Brunswick County Animal Shelter today with Bear. Bear is an adorable red Australian Shepherd mix. He's about one year old, and he and his brother Chance are here, both here. Their owner could no longer keep them, so they're really looking for a good home. They've been here since February 8th, and they're both just sweet as they can be. 
So if you think that you could provide a good home for Bear or his brother Chance, come on out to the Brunswick County Animal Shelter on Green Swamp Road. They are open for public visitation with all of their dogs and cats from 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. As the Brunswick Beacon approaches its 50th anniversary of publication this year, we continue to take a look back at stories from early editions of the local newspaper. This week in the Beacon, we review Brunswick County history as reflected in Beacon newspapers published from 1967 through 1971. Among those is the December 1967 story about Brunswick County Sheriff Harold Willett and an ABC officer dynamiting a 1,000 gallon liquor, liquor still that had been discovered in Exum. You can read about this and other stories in our walk down memory lane in this week's Beacon. Construction is underway on a future state operated boat ramp on the intercoastal waterway in Sunset Beach. The waterwork portion of the project is expected to be finished soon. The North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission will bring in its own construction crew to do land work, including a parking lot. The goal is to have the ramp completed in time for the upcoming summer season. 11-year-old Benjamin Higgins is a 5th grade student at Union Elementary School and he has the chance to win $50,000 for a new school cafeteria. But he can't win without your help. Higgins entered the Ben's Beginners Cooking Contest, sponsored by Uncle Ben's Rice. As a finalist, he is votes away from bringing home a $50,000 prize for Union Elementary, $20,000 for his family, and winning a trip to appear on the Rachel Ray Show. Voting began on Monday, February 27th and ends on Sunday, March 11th. To vote for Ben's video, Ben Making Mardi Gras Jambalaya, visit the Uncle Ben's page on Facebook. Hi, I'm Ben. Even though my family lives in North Carolina, we love to celebrate Mardi Gras. Today, I'm going to make jambalaya. Start with preparing your Uncle Ben's rice. Then, setting it aside, you'd add onion to the olive oil at high, t high heat. Once the onions are clear, add chicken, chicken spice, paprika, Hundreds of people attended the 6th Annual Brunswick Beacon Help Expo featuring about 40 vendors and sponsors last Saturday at West Brunswick High School. Participants received free screenings for blood pressure, spinal and nervous system issues, dermatology, dental, vision, and digital interoral with computerized readouts and cholesterol checks. That's all the time we have for tonight, but you can read all these stories and much more in this week's Beacon. If you have comments or suggestions for us at Brunswick Beat, you can email us at brunswickbeat at brunswickbeacon.com. Don't forget to follow the Beacon on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for Brunswick Beacon. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to tune in next week for a brand new edition of the Brunswick Beat, Brunswick County's only television news show. We close out this week's show with images from the Coastal Camera Club's photo contest.